Okay, so we've survived the cost of living crisis. Mm. I'm now 20 years older and I want to fucking retire. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? What does that even mean? Well, what does that even mean? I mean, you get to that point and you think again, this is a trigger point. And we always say to people, this is a great time to review because all of your, you've been in an accumulation phase of your life uh, till then. You've been trying to accumulate wealth, trying to build everything you do, positive cash flow, accumulate, save, and all the rest of it. You're then changing your entire view to, with all due respect, an almost decumulation in some cases, because you have a way you want to live your lifestyle. And therefore, there comes a decision point where you have to think, actually, what income do I need in retirement to retire? Can I afford to retire? Um, and this is quite a sobering point for some people. Some people don't even want to retire because they think, actually, if I stop working, it will affect my mental health so much because I won't have purpose. And this is something we understand as men. You've got to have purpose. Um, that they actually go to what's called, uh, I heard recently, a twat. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They just reduce their hours. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, a twat. Um, oh, so they become a twat, um, quite literally. Um, and because that, for their mental health and their mindset, is much better. They have the purpose of getting up a few days a week. You know, they have long weekends. You know, and that for them is more important about lifestyle. They're still earning some money. They're not so worried. So you need to assess and have a decision point about what income do you need? What is first of all, what does retirement mean for you? What income do you need? But also what capital do you need behind you to sleep well at night? And this is something we talk to our clients about along with, you know, the three key points, you know, your income tax situation, your capital gains tax situation, and you're getting to the stage with all due respect, you should start thinking about your inheritance tax situation because you've built up some assets, you might have an inheritance tax situation that you might need to address slowly over time as part of your plan because your plan takes a different point, a uh, different, uh, you know, path at this point. You're all about producing income, making your money work harder. Um, and that's where we really get involved with our clients to discuss this, um, you know, to really figure out you know, what can your money produce for you uh, tax efficiently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the next stage. That's, yeah. you know, where you really realize actually all my hard efforts, have they got me to this point of, you know, the path to financial freedom? Have I really got peace of mind to the point where I can now retire? What's the fruit of my labor? If you are in a position where you might have your house bought because you've been self-employed mm. and you go to retire you look well you're looking to retire maybe you're coming up to 60 mm. you haven't really got a very good pension mm. is there any sort of thing that you would recommend that maybe they got four or five more years of a fairly good income is there something that they could put it into sorry at that what, point? what do you mean by you got your house bought and bought and paid for you mean bought and paid for house bought and paid for yeah coming up to your 60s yep. just thinking of like a scenario for someone yeah maybe they haven't got the best pension in the world because they've been self-employed they put all their money into their house then they're looking and thinking you know, shit, I haven't got a great pension. At that point, is there something maybe that they could do to, to downsize? Well, yeah, I mean, you've or? always got to remember as well, um, and this is something that's quite important for self-employed people, you've got to check that you've been paying your national insurance contributions mm -hmm. because that builds up your uh, entitlement to the state pension, which actually in today's terms, and I know this because my dad started claiming it, um, it's Did not it? insignificant. You know, it's over 10 grand a year. Uh, is, it? Yeah. is that is still a thing though yeah stay pension is still a thing yeah absolutely oh, yeah. absolutely okay. and this for most perhaps. people forms a really everyone good gets a state pension as well as long as you're paying national insurance contributions at the present rules they say 35 years of national insurance contributions to claim the full state pension that is a really great starting point for your retirement and you've got to obviously reach the retirement pension age or whatever that will be at that the time keep, that keeps going on every yeah, year yeah that keeps it? coming up by the time we get there guys it'll probably be you know, 75, 80 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it all depends on the, probably what they can afford in the debt yeah. situation of yeah. our country but um, at the same time you know it's, it's a really strong it's a strengthener to your plan you know so if you're in that situation where you're asset rich technically what is it what is the Retirement age now sixty seven. Well, they, so. yeah, they said sixty seven, sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I just didn't. I couldn't remember. I thought sixty seven. Yeah, but the, they'll write to you, and you can actually do what's called a BR nineteen state pension forecast um, to see your national insurance. You can log on to the government gateway portal, and this is something I actually encourage people to do. Actually, if you're young or old, because you can log on to the government gateway portal, and you can check your national insurance contributions. It's a good thing to do actually, just to make sure that your payroll is being processed properly. And then you know that, frankly, you know, for the future, 
you're doing all the right things you should do. So log on to the Government Gateway Portal, have a look at what your national insurance co contributions are being logged as, because they should be logged, and then you can just check that you're doing all the right things as you go along. But at this late stage where you're at now, where you're thinking, I'm getting close to retirement, I don't know how much more work I can stick in my life, um, yeah, I think I'll just, uh, you need to check the BR19. Do a BR19 state pension forecast. It'll tell you in today's terms, you're due a pension um, of X, Y, and Z, which is the full state pension because well done. You've worked for 35 years and we got that record on of you on the system. Um, but that is due on your, you know, this date on whatever, which might be your birthday when you're 67 or whatever. They will tell you when it's due. And that is the key point. Then you know from that date, I will be getting my state pension. And that starts my plan off. I will be on in today's terms, roughly about £10,000 a year, depending on your contribution levels you know, as a starter. And that helps a lot of people. Well, yeah, that covers most essentials. Well, exactly. It's, you know, it, you it's, it's not a lot, but it's mm. equally not to be sneezed at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's a contribution. But I think, I feel like this is, this is why I ask. I, I, this, you know, this is one, I guess I probably come across a little bit ignorant in regard to like the pension situation, because obviously the, the auto-enrolment, and the need now to pay into your own pension. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I, I partly assumed it was gone, but it's probably my, my, my dad just chatting <laughs> <laughs> no, conspiracies. No, no but, it's definitely still there. But it's just, yeah, it just seems like it must be a lot less now than it used to be perhaps, right? Because it, it feels like you probably, it's probably not enough to live on in today's terms. And that's why you need- The state pension was never designed to be a complete one size you know solves all mm. um it was designed to complement the plan of people who had worked their entire lives and contributed to the system which is you know we all respect we all moan about paying tax mm. but someone needs to fund this great society that we live in mm. and therefore you know you suck it up and you get on with it yeah. um and therefore this is effectively just society giving back to you and complementing your plan so you're not in poverty in retirement that was the whole idea of the state pension so no it's it's not going anywhere from what i can see on the policy side um, but it is a very good strengthener to people's financial plans at that stage. Um, but if you're getting to that stage and you're in that situation where you're asset rich and cash poor, you should probably seek advice um, as to what your situation is. And frankly, you know, consider accordingly what yeah, someone says to you. Because it's all down to context and there might be a number of other factors going on in their lives. Um, you know, and as a regulated professional, you have to know your client. You have to do a fact find on them. You need to really, it's like with you guys, you know, when you do your fitness, fitness training and everything else, you really get to know your client. You really get to know their ins and outs. Get what they're saying, you know, in context, everything in context, and then make a suitable plan for them. That is the key point of everything that we do in the industry. And, and someone in that situation really does need to seek some advice. Mm -hmm. Because um, there might be some things that they've missed. There might be some benefits they could claim with all respect, universal credits, etc., uh, pension credits, and all those things need to be investigated to, frankly, help them recover their plan so that they can potentially retire, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. or just know the situation and carry on. You yeah, know, be balanced. So, if someone um, maybe has done quite well in life and they they want to retire a little bit sooner than you know the the government stated age of retirement, is there like a general rule of thumb in regard to you know, sort of wealth that you would normally sort of suggest it, when it, someone... It all would... comes back to that argument of how much income? Yeah. What does retirement mean for you? How much income do you need to live off? How much capital do you want behind you to make sure that if something goes wrong, if you need care later on? If you've got a strong income, normally, you know, you can afford... I mean, care is an incredible cost. I mean, mm. we've got a lot of clients actually who are... Well, a significant number who are in care or, you know, about to receive care and the costs associated with that. And it's a very real thing for, I think, our generation, our parents' generation as they approach this age now. Um, the care costs can be incredible. And therefore, you've got to have a consideration of what income do I need to retire? What capital do I need behind me? You know, and also on top of that, if I'm of that way, what do I want to leave behind for my children? You need to plan accordingly. Um, so that's where it really comes down to. Um, on that point, you need to have that discussion with yourself. What do I need to live off? You know, 50 grand a year, 60 grand a year. Yeah. That'd be nice, you know, lovely. But what do I need to do? What, are, what assets do I need to save to really produce that level of income? And that's where you come in with all due respect, talk to a regulated financial advisor, you know, um, someone with my background and accreditations, and they just say to you, this is your plan. This is where you're at. There is a gap. Therefore, or well done you. You're, you're at that situation already. You can retire tomorrow. <laughs> great. Hey, well, so that's words we all like to hear, Tracking right? What a great chat that yeah. would be. <laughs> but that's it. It's just, it's just, yeah. You have that chat with a regulated professional, and they will tell you your situation, 
um, in black and white and you can just take it right okay either I can crack on or I know where I got to go and sometimes everyone needs that check it's another trigger point in life you know if you're thinking about you're getting to the age where I don't know how much work I can stomach or generally I just want to retire I just want to live some more life you know I've been putting in the hours for a long time now and some people just want to do more lifestyle yeah. you know readdress the balance and they just say to us you know can I afford this and we say to them look here's where your figures are this is what we can do for you what do you think? Mm. What are you comfortable with? What's the discussion here? What's the outputs? And also, stress test, what if your kids come back to you and ask for a bit of money? You know, yeah, this is another conversation. <laughs> well, this is it. You know, they come back and say, you know, dad, mum, you know, you obviously want to help your children in life. Mm. You know, deposits for houses, um, you know, help with any marriage situations that might occur, um, you know, help with the grandchildren. Um, these are all things you need to factor into your financial plan when you stress test in life. These are all life events and all trigger points for you. So we as professionals address all this with cash flow forecasting and say, look, this is the worst case scenario. This is the best case scenario. You could end up somewhere in the middle. Um, and how do you feel about that? And they will come back and go, yeah, that's fine by me. Or actually I need to still keep working. You've just given me the motivation I needed. I will adjust my attitude, readdress my efforts. And frankly, there's my outcome. Thank you for clarifying for me.